Is the RTX 4070 the answer to your GPU needs? It's small, it's sufficient, it games at 4K mostly, but it's also overpriced and doesn't measure up to previous 70 class standards. It's a mixed bag, so why don't we dive in? Thanks so much for stopping in and checking out my review of the latest release from NVIDIA, the RTX 4070 Founders Edition. This cute little guy arrived in the same size box as the massive RTX 4090 and 4080 cards. So when I popped open the lid and saw just how small it was by comparison, it caught me by surprise. I suppose retaining the same packaging material across the entire product line is great for continuity and saves on design costs, but I can't help but wonder if a less intricate and heavy box would have helped cut down on the cost, even if it's by just a small amount. After all, when you line up the 4070 next to basically any other 40 series card, it gets completely dwarfed. And if we've reached the point where a base 4070, not a TI, not a Super, and not a partner model card, costs $600 MSRP, I think we need to do everything in our power to trim that down. So yeah, you're gonna hear a lot in this video talking about the cost of this card. Because again, that has become the sticking point for recent reviews. We are well beyond the point where we can justify some crazy cost bump by pointing to raw performance numbers. As the 4070 is by all measures a mainstream mid-range graphics card offering with what amounts to a pretty steep asking price. In fact, here's a chart comparing the MSRP of 70 series graphics cards dating back 10 years to the GTX 770 in May of 2013 with the green overlay showing inflation percentage during that same period. Inflation is of course not the only thing that might trigger a necessary cost increase, but if we go strictly by that measure, the RTX 4070 should cost about $426, not 600. So what else are we getting in here that makes up for it? Well, the first thing that we can usually point to generation on generation is the decrease in process node size leading to significantly more CUDA cores on each package. The RTX 3070 had 5,888 CUDA cores manufactured using the Samsung 8 nanometer process node. The RTX 4070 has 5,888 CUDA cores despite using TSMC's four nanometer process node. So that's kind of a wash. The RTX 3070 only had eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory while the RTX 4070 has 12 gigs of G6X. That's, that's gotta be it. But the 4070's memory runs on a slower bus, meaning that memory bandwidth is not hugely different. The 4070 does clock substantially higher, however, and it uses less power overall. So those are pluses, but I fail to see how we're now at the point in the timeline when Nvidia is trying to normalize a $600 70 series card. The math just doesn't add up here. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk actual numbers, starting with that aforementioned power draw. This was extremely impressive to observe as peak power draw during my gaming tests never exceeded 200 watts. That was through 1080, 1440, and 4K testing of Cyberpunk 2077. This result is by far the lowest out of any of the competing cards and is likely the reason that the cooler on the 4070 is refreshingly small. It still maintains the same design language we've been seeing for the past two generations now, with a flow-through heatsink design and the silver black coloring. But at an actual two slots of width and just nine and a half inches or 241 millimeters long, this is a GPU that brings back some sanity to GPU design. It can fit in small form factor cases, it won't interfere with other expansion cards with a bulging cooler, and it can cool itself pretty well due to how little power it's pulling. Overall, this is a huge bonus and actually is a product that the market was in desperate need of. Even AMD's 7900 XT is slightly girthier than two slots and consumes over 100 more watts than the RTX 4070. Yes, you still do have to deal with that rather annoying 12VH power connector, but as we get further into the life cycle of it and as more direct plug and play options become available on ATX 3.0 power supplies, this becomes less of an issue. So we've established that the RTX 4070 is efficient and small, but how does it compare on raw rate stats like average gaming frame rate? I ran the 4070 through my nine game test suite at all three main resolutions to see what kind of numbers it puts up. 
and here are the results. Please note that there is a minor typo in the charts. The memory used here was 32 gigs, not 16. As is tradition around here, we'll kick things off with Cyberpunk 2077. All of these titles were tested on ultra settings with no ray tracing features or NVIDIA DLSS enabled. The 4070 manages solid frame rates at 1080 and 1440, and even the 4K result is manageable if you click down to high instead of ultra. Red Dead Redemption 2 was up next and we barely eked out a 60 FPS average at 4K. The results for the other two resolutions were also slightly lower than I had expected. And when we finish going through all nine games, I'll show you why. We still did manage to break 100 FPS at 1440p, which for this game is plenty. Guardians of the Galaxy is an NVIDIA friendly title in the vast majority of my tests, so the 1080p result was pretty expected. At 1440p and 4K, we of course see frame rates step down significantly, but again, we see a very playable 92 FPS at 4K. Far Cry 6 also gave us an average frame rate in excess of 60 FPS across the board, with the 72 FPS number at 4K giving us a very enjoyable experience, even at the highest resolution. Even though this is a first person shooter, the style of the gameplay doesn't necessitate performance of 144 frames per second or higher. F1 2022 also gave us a very nice result. Although on this one, I did actually go through the first runs at 4K with ray tracing features all enabled and was getting some very choppy gameplay before realizing my mistake. Without ray tracing though, every resolution was a pretty good experience. Borderlands 3 actually brought us very close to the border of 60 FPS at 4K, but still hovered slightly above that line at 62 average frames per second. This game is surprisingly hard to run for as simple as the graphics are sometimes, but at 1080 and 1440, the performance was certainly adequate. Metro Exodus is another tough one with very similar results to Borderlands at 4K. I actually used to play this game a lot, and the appeal of it for me was that it was one of the first titles with ray tracing features baked in. So playing it without those features isn't necessarily ideal, at least in my eyes, and from my experience, it looks eh, maybe just a little bit worse. We've got two more to go here with Dirt 5 being the last racing game in the test suite. We again saw very playable frame rates across the board, even at the highest resolution. And we'll wrap things up with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the game that makes me type ass twice every time I make one of these charts. 4K results again managed to crack 60 FPS, which in and of itself is good. But this is where things get not so good. Performance itself means very little without some context. And even if those previous nine charts that you looked at seemed promising, take a look at this comparison. This is the average frame rate of competing cards at 4K across the same test suite, where the RTX 4070 actually comes in last place and not by a small amount. The previous gen AMD 6800 XT is 5% faster, and the RTX 3080 crushes the RTX 4070 by about 13%. This is my biggest complaint about the RTX 4070 and why I again think that Nvidia has missed the mark. I wonder if they think that all PC gamers are just so new to this space that they have no memory of the past. A past where the $380 GTX 1070 was as fast as the $650 980 Ti, or where the $500 3070 was as fast as the $1200 2080 Ti. This used to be the cadence. The next generation 70 card was about as fast as the previous generation flagship for significantly fewer dollars. Now, we're looking at a reality where the $600 RTX 4070 doesn't perform anywhere near the $700 RTX 3080. And if you want to take into account the secondhand market, you can find 3080s for $550 to $600 all day long. Not to mention that you could spend an extra 50 bucks for a brand new AMD 6950 XT right now at multiple retailers, and you get 16 gigs of VRAM and 18% better game performance there doesn't appear to be a reason to actually buy an RTX 4070 besides the physical size of it. Can you think of one? So this is a huge conundrum for me. This is the third straight release from Nvidia that will likely be poorly received by the tech media. But while the performance is lackluster and the price is pretty outrageously high, the market kind of needs this product. A small, power-efficient, modern card with AV1 encoding and 4K gaming capability just doesn't exist right now. 
And as a result, I think the 4070 will sell. There's also the fact that the 70 name just usually brings in droves of people who expect that this will be the best value in this generation. Nvidia keeps pushing the boundaries of what consumers will accept. The 4080, 4070 Ti, and now the 4070 are all overpriced. The 4080 rightfully languished on shelves with its ridiculous $1,200 price tag. The 4070 Ti did move some units, but they are still plentiful and available almost everywhere. As a result, I have a bad feeling that consumers who keep saying that they were gonna wait for cards with more reasonable prices will just eventually give in and buy an RTX 4070 because it's only $599. Just because it's the cheapest one of the bunch doesn't mean that it's good by default. I encourage all of you out there to be prudent when it comes to evaluating your GPU purchases. Other options exist, and being loyal to a brand who has no loyalty to anything except money is foolish. Explore options from AMD and even Intel. Explore the used market, or even just explore the possibility of waiting. I'm sure these 4070s will be on eBay soon enough once people realize that they likely overspent. So what do you guys think of the RTX 4070? Will you be buying one? Let me know down below in the comments. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button on your way out. It does help the channel out a ton. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.